Okay, let's get started. Hello, and welcome uh, to PowerPoints Anonymous. I'm Dr. Don, your counselor and facilitator, and, and remember, there'll be no last names. We're all just here to support each other. Now, every day in the world, there are over 300 million PowerPoint presentations given every day. Millions and millions of those are happening online, just like this therapy session right here. And PowerPoint abuse is a horrible, horrible affliction that all of us in this session right here share. Now, thanks to a tool like the WebEx meeting, we can share uh, desktops, we can chat, and we can do some polling in order to support each other in having to beat our horrible, horrible PowerPoint addiction. Who would like to share first? I guess I'll go. Um, let me put up this slide first. Go right ahead, Peter. Uh, hi, I'm Peter, and I am a, a PowerPoint abuser. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Uh, anyway, I'm a CEO, and I give many presentations. Uh, here are some of my comments that I've received. Some people have said that I write everything on my slides, and then I read my slides. I frequently turn away from the group, and I show absolutely no personality. Peter, by any chance did you read that? Uh, I do not read my slides. This is my natural speaking voice and tempo. Besides, my staff says I'm an excellent speaker. Okay, well, uh, thank you for sharing, Peter. Um, group, let's take a poll. When Peter speaks, who does he remind you of? Uh, would you say A, George Bush, Stephen Hawking, uh, Martin Luther King, or a brick wall? And I'm going to open up the poll. Uh, if you'll all enter your answers, A, B, C, or D. Who does Peter remind you of? And here come the results. And a brick wall. You've even voted for a brick wall yourself, Peter. Apparently, you're not really familiar with how to use the device, uh, unless you really think you speak like a brick wall. But really, Peter, uh, you don't want to read off your slides. And I'm going to show you why. We're going to close this poll and go back to my slides. And I'll show you exactly what reading your PowerPoints does. I'm going to inflict the same pain on you that you have inflicted on others. Reading your PowerPoint slides, uh, many people tend to put every word they're going to say on their PowerPoint slides. Although this needs, uh, eliminates the need to memorize your talk, ultimately makes your slides crowded, worrying, and boring, you lose your audience's attention before you even reach the bottom of your first slide. We're killing people with this kind of stuff. Now, Peter, does that seem clear to you? You can't speak without slides, can you, Peter? Okay, that is so, so sad. Peter should use bullet points. Um, I'm sorry, who was that who spoke? Hi, I'm Bill, and uh, I'm a PowerPoint abuser. Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. Peter should use bullet points. That's what I do. Hmm. That's an excellent point, Bill. Uh, but there are some problems with bullet points. And, and let me show you. I have a slide uh, showing this exact same thing. You should avoid excessive bullet pointing only bullet key points, too many bullet points, and your key messages will not stand out. In fact, the term bullet point comes from people firing guns at annoying presenters. Do you see what I mean? That's a good point. Thank you. I'd like to go. Hi, my name is Stevie, and I'm a PowerPoint abuser. Hi, Stevie. I seem to have a problem with animations. Could, could you just calm it down uh, just a little bit, Stevie? Sorry. I can stop any time I want to, really. Mm -hmm. I know what you're going through, Stevie. Uh, you find yourself uh, adding an animation or two, maybe a drop down or a zoom in, and then another one, and you think, wow, that looks cool, and then you add another one, and, and before you know it, it's 9 o'clock at night, and you've worked on the same slide all day long. You've missed your family dinner, your kids are already in bed, and, and basically you have no life. Yes, this has happened to me as well. Been there, done that. It's happened to all of us, Stevie. The truth is, as this next chart will show, the animations really only help if you have a crowd that are visual learners. Your effectiveness will go up. But if they're easily distracted, people are not even paying attention to what you're talking about. They're just watching the cool stuff fly around. And there's regions, by the way. There's the uh, simple but effective region there, the active but confusing region, the uh, effective but boring, the active but ineffective, the dull but static region, the uh, busy but useless region over there, the ADD only region in the corner, the useful amusing, the stupid confusing, the dull triangle, the hyper triangle, the uh, sleepy square, the dizzying pentagon, and everything else would group into just what we call pointless motion. Now, the reason I shared this slide with you group is that this one slide took me two and a half weeks to make. You see, I'm Don and I too am a PowerPoint. Hi, Don. Hi, Don. Thank you, Cooper. 
it means a lot to me that, that you're there for me. I'd like to do a big WebEx group hug if we could right now. Oh. Thank you. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. Let's look at some final notes. We're going to meet at the same time next week. <laughs> same WebEx meeting. Uh, the topic next week will be uh, the relationship between you, your mother, and uh, how that associates with the slide transitions you choose. And as always, go out and have a great day. And remember, if you're having problems with PowerPoint, we're always here for you. You're not alone. Welcome to WebEx.